Think you know the essentials of shoutcasting? Think again. I'm your caster Seda, and this is the Shoutcaster's Cache. To be blunt, shoutcasting is as easy as talking about a game of League of Legends while it's happening. And sometimes, even then, you don't need to talk. Remember the purpose of a shoutcaster, to enhance a broadcast. In my introductory episode last week, I talked about how different casters use different methods to enhance a broadcast. Freak likes to use humor, Rivington uses his excellent skill, and Husky uses just oodles and oodles of hype. Finding your own style and how it suits you is important, but that's a topic for an entirely different video. Today, I just want to cover the essentials of shoutcasting, the most basic things that every shoutcaster should know, regardless of whether they're play-by-play or color. Shoutcasting is hard, and I mean really hard. It's physically and mentally draining to the point of complete and utter exhaustion. Physically, you're using your diaphragm to control your airflow to speak in a controlled manner, literally for hours on end. Mentally, you must also be 100% committed to the task at hand. That means no bathroom breaks, no time to check stream or Twitter chat, and no mental reprieve until that red recording light goes off. What this intense focus gives you is credibility, a topic that warrants its own video. Without credibility, a viewer has absolutely no reason to trust anything you say, and when forced to listen, can grow to hate the words that are coming out of your mouth. Through technique and preparation, credibility can be cultivated with the viewer, leading you to be more trusted and thus more respected with the community. Maintaining credibility is one of the core skills that all shoutcasters must have. Though individual credibility is important, a massive portion of shoutcasting is done in pairs. After ensuring individual credibility, the next thing any good shoutcaster should focus on is the credibility of his shoutcasting duo. Are you an effective team? We are an effective team. The trick to this is simple, communication between the casters. This means having a rapport both on the camera and off, being able to speak freely with your casting buddy. If the two of you stumble over each other and interrupt each other during the cast, that makes for a slappy broadcast and can detract rather than enhance. Speaking freely means letting your co-caster know what they can improve upon, while also being able to accept criticism yourself. A good shoutcasting duo sounds natural. This means that the two shoutcasters are happy to work with each other with no undercurrents of stress or difficulty in their manner of speaking. A prime example of this are Artosis and Tasteless from the StarCraft II community. They have casting synergy out the wazoo. Though I'm trying my hardest, there's so much to being a shoutcaster that I can't cover with just this video series. The best way to learn the ins and outs of the field of shoutcasting is to go out and experience it for yourself. Simply spending time in front of a microphone in the booth will help increase your casting capabilities. I'll be making a video on practice techniques soon, but for now, simply try to increase the quantity of your casting rather than the quality. We'll get to that later. I prefer new casters to have enormous scattered portfolios rather than narrow and specific ones because that means they're willing to do the work to become an excellent shoutcaster. Do you still think shoutcasting is easy? Let me know why in the comments. And did you know that clicking subscribe makes it actively easier to dodge Teemo mushrooms? Thanks for watching. Caster. To enhance to a broadcast, to enhance to... In my episode... Firstly, let me preface this by...